boy, what, what a warm, warm welcome. And <coughs> hold on. <coughs> hold on. Oh, there, I finally got him. You know, he's been, <laughs> he's been, he's been hanging around for a while. He's twice the size that he came in at, I'm telling you. And I, I'll, I'll tell you, might as well get rid of all the B jokes. I've heard them all, all weekend. And, but I heard a lot of conspiracy theorists too. And I'm not going to name the mayor, but one mayor calls me up and said, you know something, Doug, you got to be careful of those opposition B drones now. They're coming around. So, you know, something went right down the hatch. I could just uh, picture this going and the, and the guy controlling the drone, he was probably sitting back and thinking, oh man, I really messed up. There's a $100,000 drone in the premier's stomach there. It's like, you know, you could hear, you remember, remember the show E.T., E.T., phone home? Now everything's coming together because I see a little microchip on the bottom of this little guy here. He kept saying, BB, phone home. That's all I heard all weekend, but uh, it was all good. And I got to apologize to Colin DeMello because he was up next from Global to ask me a question. And, uh, you know, so I, I just thought I can't wait for his question next time. I, I know Colin, he's going to be up there and he's going to say, Premier, can you tell us about the honey shortage? And then we always give them two. We always give them two questions. And Premier, how can you explain to all the worker bees why you killed the Ontario Queen Mother Bee? So, you know, something, Colin. You don't have to ask me those questions, but I'll tell you, it's uh, great to be here. And, and good morning, everyone. I'd like to start by welcoming everyone to Amos Annual Conference here in, in Ottawa. And let me say, it's great to see so many friends and colleagues in person after three long years, very long years. Yeah. I'd like to thank AMO President and Mayor of Perry Sound, Jamie McGarvey, for inviting me today to speak. And, and Jamie, you've done a spectacular job, so thank you for all the work you've done. Any chance I have to speak directly with our municipal partners is a privilege because our government understands the need for all levels of government to work together. We know the value of unity, of teamwork, of putting aside partisanship and working together to build Ontario. Over the past four years, we've come so far together. Today, looking ahead, there's still so much more work to do. As we gather this week, Ontario is facing challenges on a number of fronts. Inflation has hit highs not seen nearly in four decades, putting real strain on household budgets. Global supply chains remain stressed. With the lowest level of unemployment since the early 80s, Ontario continues to face a generational labour shortage. And as our province grows and welcomes more newcomers, Construction on things like roads, highways, and homes hasn't kept up. The only way we'll overcome these challenges, the only way we will protect the strength of our economy is by working together. Working together to build an economy with better jobs and bigger paychecks. To build roads, highways, and public transit that will keep Ontario moving. To build a workforce for the jobs of today and tomorrow to build more homes people can afford in communities with good schools, hospitals, and long-term care homes. This is our government's plan to build Ontario, and we need everyone on board to get it done for the people of this province. We need, we need to move forward together. Looking back, I can't think of a better example of the power of collaboration than how all three levels of government have come together to breathe new life into Ontario's automotive sector. In two years, Ontario has secured $16 billion in new investments to build the cars of the future right here in Ontario, including $5 billion to build Canada's first large-scale battery plant in the great city of Windsor. And thank you, Mayor Delkins. Together, we're investing in the future of clean, green steel at Algoma in Sault Ste. Marie and DeFasco in Hamilton, and unlocking the vast potential of the Ring of Fire, working with our Indigenous partners to finally 
build the all-season roadway to the region's critical minerals. And when we connect these vast mineral deposits in the north with our manufacturing might in the south, Ontario will have everything it needs to be North America's auto manufacturing powerhouse once again. The cars of the future will be built right here in Ontario by Ontario workers from start to finish. From minerals to manufacturing and everything in between, every region and every worker will benefit from a once-in-a-generation opportunity. And of course, a growing economy leads to growing communities. Over the next decade, Ontario's population is expected to grow by more than 2 million people, with congestion costing us estimated $11 billion every year. It's never been more important to invest in building province-wide transportation infrastructure. So we're investing in a historic $86.6 billion over the next 10 years to build and expand roads, highways, and transit infrastructure right across Ontario. We're, ex <laughs> we're expanding Highway 417 here in Ottawa. We're building the Garden City Skyway Bridge expansion over the Welland Canal to serve the Niagara region. We're expanding Highway 7 for drivers in Kitchener, Waterloo, and Guelph. And we're building Highway 413 and the Bradford Bypass. At the, same <laughs> at the same time, our government will continue to make historic investments to build public transit, including building the all-new Ontario Line, expanding the province's GO train network, and finally bringing the Northlander back home to Timmins and Cochrane. A plan this ambitious will require skilled hands to get the job done. Across Ontario, there are 380,000 unfilled jobs. Without action, we risk this number growing. That's why our government is investing more than $1 billion in a skilled trade strategy to get more women and men into rewarding careers. We're expanding three-year college degrees and investing in union-led training centres. At the same time, we're eliminating barriers that stop skilled newcomers from entering the trades. As we continue to urge the federal government to double Ontario's share of newcomers so our economy can reach its full potential. Ontario has the jobs and now we need the workers, especially as we work with each of you, our municipal partners, to build 1.5 million homes over the next 10 years. Like most of Canada, Ontario is facing a housing crisis decades in the making. Previous governments refused to build the housing we needed, and the dream of home ownership slipped away from a generation of Ontarians. But our government won't delay doing what's needed. We're doing more to get more housing built. The result can already be seen. In 2021, this province saw more than 100,000 new housing starts, the highest level since 1987, as well as the highest level of new rental starts since 1991. But that is just the beginning. Our government understands that the real solution to housing crisis is to increase supply full stop. And, and together, we can get more shovels in the ground with an all-hands-on-deck effort from all levels of government to build more attainable homes. For our part, we're providing more resources to speed up municipal processes. We're investing $350 million in programs designed to cut red tape for municipalities and streamline the planning and development approval processes. We're working with municipalities to crack down on land speculation and protect home buyers from those who are trying to take advantage of them. Last week, Minister Clark introduced legislation that goes even further, the Strong Mayors Building Homes Act. We'll provide Toronto and Ottawa with the additional tools needed to advance provincial priorities, but building more homes is at the top of the list. In the coming months, we'll have more information on how those, these tools will be expanded to other municipalities, so more municipal leaders like yourselves can help build Ontario. 
Growing communities with strong economies and more homes also need better access to important social services like health care. After decades of underfunding and neglect, our government is helping Ontario's health system recover and rebuild. We're making the largest health infrastructure investment in the province's history, getting shovels in the ground to build and expand hospitals and long-term care homes in communities all across Ontario. This is on top of the 3,500 new hospital beds we've already added, but more beds is only half the answer. We also need staff to care for patients. Since the start of the pandemic, we've hired over 10,500 healthcare workers, including nurses and personal support workers. That's on top of the 14,579 net new nurses we've hired since we were elected in 2018. To help address current pressures, our government is doing more to get more qualified nurses doctors, personal support workers into Ontario's system to care for patients. We're removing barriers that stop internationally trained nurses and personal support workers from safely caring for patients. We've launched the Learn and Stay grant, which pays the full cost of tuition and supplies for nursing students in exchange for practicing in underserved regions after graduation. We're implementing the largest expansion of medical schools in over a decade to train more doctors. And we're continuing to expand the popular community paramedicine program and in investing $1 billion more dollars in home and community care. So that more people, yes. So that more people can receive care at home rather than in the hospital. Since day one on the job, Minister Jones has been actively engaging with our frontline partners to identify concrete solutions. I know she'll have more to say on Wednesday because we'll always be there to support our health care system. My friends, we have faced tremendous challenges over the past few years, but by working as Team Ontario, standing side by side, we have met those challenges head on. We can't stop now because the people of Ontario are counting on us to get it done for them. We cannot and will not waver in achieving our goals of a stronger health system, world-class transportation infrastructure, building homes for families of this province, and providing good paying jobs for all. Because there's only one way forward in building a prosperous Ontario for everyone, and that's building together. Let's get it done. Thank you, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Our next speaker served four consecutive terms as Deputy Grand Council Chief of the Anishinaabek Nation before being elected their Grand Council Chief and elected Ontario Regional Chief in 2021. Please welcome Ontario Regional Chief Glenn Hare. <laughs> 